pad thai. Well, the internet describes it as a stir-fry dish that is made with rice noodles, shrimp, chicken, or tofu, peanuts, scrambled egg, and bean sprouts. But I'll tell you what, it's a whole lot more than that. Pad Thai is a collision, if you will, of many different experiences. Texturally, taste-wise, if it's done right, you will get that sweet, you'll get that spicy, you'll get that savoriness, the tartness, everything is there. So today we're going to make a Pad Thai. It certainly exceeds anything that I've ever eaten at the restaurants. So here we go. These noodles I got at an Asian market and they're like a dollar ninety a package for a whole pound of them. Now the Pad Thai recipe, um, I usually like to use about half of this package. We're going to take half of those noodles and we're going, going to soak them in some warm water. Now over here I have a kettle that I heated up some water for coffee earlier. And pour that water over the noodles. While those are sitting there, we're going to work on some tofu. I am using chicken in my pad thai, but I also like to have another texture in there. Tofu, extra firm, actually is a great idea. and. For this uh, one pound package of tofu, I'm going to use half of it. But we don't want it to be wet, we actually want it to brown on the edges. The way that we do that is we take it out, we cut it into cubes, and we put, we put it between a towel and we press the moisture out of it. This is a flour sack cloth. I buy these at Walmart. They are the most valuable kitchen tool ever. That's half of the tofu right there. I'm going to place the other half back in its package and I'll use this in the next day for something. Right now, I'm going to fold the towel over, fold it again. I'm going to use my heavy bowl of water and noodles to press the moisture out of the tofu. Make sure it's stable because the last thing I want is for this bowl to tip over and that's good and sturdy. So for the rest of the recipe, we are going to need some three tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of peanuts, we're going to crush those, two eggs, a lime, smoked chili powder, I have some salt here, but I'm not sure if we'll need it. Vegetable or canola oil, green onions, coconut milk, half a red onion, fish sauce. This fish sauce I purchased at an Asian market, and this is a fish sauce that I love the most. Absolutely delicious, and if you're familiar with Vietnamese cooking, fish sauce is a very big staple for them. Um, and this is the, the sweetest. There are other fish sauces like the squid brand that actually are much more potent. And they, they do work well in things, but for pad thai, this is what I love. <laughs> Okay, go easy on me here because we are not making a homemade peanut sauce. Um, I do not have any interest in running peanuts through a food processor, adding coconut milk and, and kind of creating a puree, although I could. Taste of Thai makes an excellent peanut sauce mix. It is a powder that mixes two packets of this will mix with one can of coconut milk. These things are blended with a whisk in a saucepan and he heated gently over the stove and it will make the most delicious peanut sauce. So this is the one shortcut that I take, but I think it's an acceptable shortcut. Daikon radish. You can find this at any grocery store. Um, this is a wonderful, light, crispy vegetable, and this recipe uses a couple of tablespoons of this. So we're gonna go ahead and get that cut up. I'm going to make matchsticks out of this. I think that that size and texture will add a lot to my pad thai.
let's go with the whole amount that I cut up. Adds a lot of nice, bright crunchiness to the pad thai. And remember, we're going for contrasting textures here. So I think this is a win. My tofu has been pressing for a while, so I'm gonna give it an extra press here. And I am actually putting some force on it. And you can tell, I don't wanna squeeze this stuff out of here like toothpaste, but at the same time, I want the moisture out of it. And I can actually feel the coldness coming off of the tofu as I press. I'm actually going to cut this on my flour sack cloth. Pad thai is best cooked in a wok. You need that surface, that heated surface, to scream and cook your food. Now, rule number one when cooking with a wok is it's got to be hot. Rule number two is have all your stuff ready. All too many times I might have nine out of ten items ready and then I realize that I forgot something. There's no room for that with wok cooking. Everything's got to be right there ready to reach and pull it in because a lot of times you're only cooking for a half to one minute before you add your next ingredient. So let's get on that. Crush up some peanuts for the topping. There's my two tablespoons of peanuts. Mortar and pestle. And you can just Put this in a Ziploc bag if you don't have one of these and use a meat tenderizer on your cutting board with it or a frying pan or something, just something to crush those peanuts up. Next we want our eggs scrambled. Lime. We're actually going to cut this into wedges, so let's get that ready. Waiting for that wonderful tart goodness. I'm checking on my noodles. They actually feel good. I am going to drain them. They are not pasta noodles, and they have a much more firm texture to them like they're more unbreakable and pasta noodles would not actually work so to check your Asian section of your grocery store for these because even if the noodles are not the the wide flat ones such as these you can still get a great pad thai with a smaller rice noodle. I have my whisk. So I put that on a really low burner, um, my smallest burner, my simmer burner, so that I can gently cook that. The last thing I want to do is burn the coconut milk, and I do need to keep an eye on that. Time for the big stove. It's a wok, and it's got to be hot. So, into the fire. While I'm doing that, you may have noticed I'm not totally ready, so let's get some green onions cut and ready to go. I'm going to go for three. I cut those up into pieces about a half inch and my wok is already smoking so how cool is that? So a couple tablespoons of oil. We're going to get that wok nice and oiled. Time to rock and roll. That egg is done. I don't want my egg to overcook, so I'm going to use a paper plate, and I'm just going to slide that right out on there. I already see some browning happening, so I want that on the side. So, tofu goes in first. This is going to be a little splattery.
While the tofu is on, I wanted to show you this part. This chicken has been cut into small, thin sliced pieces, marinated in a Ziploc bag with a tablespoon of cornstarch, a tablespoon of oil, one egg white, a, and a small sprinkle of salt. I did sprinkle a little rice wine in there, but you don't have to do that. It does change the taste of it. But this will give that chicken that beautiful, tender, white, almost buttery texture that you see in Asian cooking. This tofu is ready. Once the tofu is cooked, make a hole in the middle, add the onion. Time for the protein to go in. This is chicken. I'm adding a little bit of water to this because what it does is it, it mixes with that egg white and cornstarch mixture and actually poaches the chicken. Now, the goal here is not to add too much. Uh, I do believe the noodles will absorb the flavor if uh, the moisture if I do, but you want to be very careful. Add just a little bit at a time. Time for the noodles. We're going to put two tablespoons of fish sauce in. three tablespoons of sugar. You can use less if you like. It does add this wow factor to this dish. Sweet radish, daikon. Eggs. At this point I'm turning off the heat. Normally I would add bean sprouts to this dish but I don't have any. I'm growing some but they're not ready. With the heat off, I'm going to add my spring onion. There. This is how we do it. So you're going to think I'm a little crazy here because this is such a necessary ingredient in this dish. This is sugar. I know there's sugar in this already, um, but this is really important. If you sprinkle a little bit of sugar on the top, chili powder, lime juice, coconut peanut sauce, get that drizzled all over. That is just the bomb. And the grand finale, get that texture on top. You can even have a few more green onions on the side that you can sprinkle to give this some color. This is a fantastic dish. I gotta tell you, this will be anything that you make at a restaurant. There's just so many things happening. There's tartness, there's sweetness, there's savory, there's spice. It's wonderful. And the, there's crunchiness, and you got the firmness of the noodles, got the softness of the tofu and the chicken, all very contrasting flavors, crunchiness of the radish. It's just a great dish. Treat yourself, treat your family, enjoy a wonderful meal that you made yourself at home for a fraction of the cost that it takes to go out. And I'm guessing yours is going to be even better than something that you get from a takeout. Give it a try. You won't be sorry.